Here is our first example of how to put together Lewis structure for a fairly simple uh, molecule here called sulfur dichloride. So, first of all, we're going to take a look and see how many valence electrons each atom has. Sulfur has six valence electrons, that's how I write it. The electron symbol with a little sub V, that means valence electrons. And chlorine has seven valence electrons. So since there's two chlorines and one sulfur, let's add up the total number of valence electrons. So this is times two, so this is equal to six, this is equal to 14. When we add them together, we have 20 valence electrons total. And so when we're done with putting the Lewis structure together, we want to make sure that we still have 20 valence electrons. All right. Next, we can see that sulfur, since it only has six valence electrons, it wants to have two more electrons. So it can accomplish that by grabbing two electrons, or it can accomplish that by sharing two electrons, so by making two bonds. Chlorine, only needing one additional valence electron, can accomplish that by only making a single bond. So from our rule, we can say since sulfur has a lower electronegativity and fewer valence electrons, chlorine has a high electronegativity, we expect sulfur to be in the center and chlorine being on the sides. So we can expect that the molecule looks something like sulfur in the middle and chlorine perhaps on either side. Now, we don't know yet if it's going to be a linear molecule or there's going to be something else going on there. Uh, we can usually, de uh, usually detect that by looking at the symmetry once we're done. Uh, next, we need to put in bonds. Remember, sulfur needs two bonds, which means it can have a bond on each side with one chlorine atom. And chlorine only needs one bond, so it looks like this takes care of the need of having eight valence electrons. This will give sulfur two additional ones by sharing it with chlorine. This will give each of the chlorine one additional one. So I think we're in good shape now. If we now add the remaining electrons that chlorine has, so it has six remaining electrons. One is used in the sharing, making the bond. That's the seventh one. Here, the same on the other side. So we're in pretty good shape there. And with sulfur, it used two of its electrons, two of its six electrons to make the bonds, one on each side. It has four remaining, so let's put the additional four electrons in like that. And that looks like that should be the Lewis structure of sulfur dichloride. Now we're going to do a few tests. Do we have the octet rule satisfied? Well, notice that here we can see that chlorine part of the time will have eight valence electrons. This chlorine part of the time will have eight valence electrons and this sulfur having four of its own electrons and then it can share these two on either side would also have eight valence electrons. So it looks like the octet rule is satisfied. What about the total number of electrons? So notice that chlorine has six here, this sulfur has four and this chlorine has six. So we have six plus four plus six of electrons that are not involved in bonding. Then we have these two that are involved in bonding and these two are involved in bonding. So we have plus two and plus two and that should add up to the total number of available electrons. If it doesn't, something is wrong and we have to reconsider. So we have six plus four is 10, 16, 18, 20. 20 and 20, that number matches, so we're good. So we, math, we, we follow the octet rule. We have the correct number of valence electrons total in our structure. It looks like this will do it. That is then the valence uh, or the Lewis structure of the, uh, of the sulfur chloride molecule. So that's how we do that. There was a simple example, but again, notice how we follow the rules one by one to make sure we have the structure correct. Notice the perfect symmetry. I would assume that this would then become a linear molecule rather than a bent molecule.